Hey, welcome back, everybody. This is Nuzo Castro Libero, and this is Hey, What Do You Want to Talk About? I want to begin my show by popping a bottle of champagne because I want to let you know I started doing some media promotions because uh, I guess some people are listening to my show, and I did a promo video, and I got to tell you, this is going to sound crazy, but I have already had 45 views since recording this show. So everybody, get uh, yourself a, a glass. Uh, maybe if you got a bottle of champagne, you might want to get that too. I'm going to open up this bottle of champagne, and uh, uh, we're going to have a little toast, okay? Oh, shit! It's not on my bitch! Uh, hurry up! Get in a paper towel! Hurry up! Get in. Hey, guys, listen. We'll be right back, okay? Oh, okay, we'll be right back. Hey, do me a favor. You clean this up because I got to go get another pair of pants and underwear. I'm soaked. Hey everybody, I'm back. I, I'm sorry about that, uh, but that bottle of champagne, uh, it exploded. I, I, it was just crazy. There's a champagne everywhere. So let's get right back to the show. I want to introduce to you this is a guy. His name is Mark Smith from Absolute Vision Production Companies, and he's from Chicago. My cousin Paolo cannot stop talking about this guy. I guess uh, Mark and his production company did a tremendous job at a place with, uh, I guess, a restaurant or something with the food. And the Mark had to come in to film it. And uh, my cousin Paolo said, this guy is uh, like a Steven Spielberg. And I am like Steven Spielberg from Jaws or Steven Spielberg from E.T. Because those are two different Steven Spielbergs to me. You know what I mean? So maybe we find out which Steven Spielberg Mark Smith is. So Mark, welcome to the show. Hey, what do you want to talk about? So hey, what do you want to talk about? Hey, Nuto, thanks for having me on today. Yeah, I think, you know, I'd like to maybe start about just kind of, you know, what I do, uh, media of all kinds, uh, emerging technologies, everything from traditional media like television commercials all the way up to, you know, newer technology like uh, VR, virtual reality, augmented reality, projection mapping, holographic uh, techniques. Um, you know, we've done all kind of stuff from from you know major uh, you know television type commercials for major sporting teams all the way to you know uh, Hyde Hotels uh, branded campaigns to projection mapping for you know, Virgin Airlines and Notre Dame University and and uh, so on and so on. Oh, that's nice, Mark. Uh, did you ever work with uh, Meryl Streep by chance? I've worked with a lot of different celebrities and uh, politicians and uh, a lot, but no, I have not actually worked with Meryl Streep. Yeah, she's the one I really, really, really want on the show. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm glad I got you on the show because, you know, I just uh, created my first uh, promo video by myself. And I got to tell you, I got, uh, you know, I got a lot of hits. Uh, I got over 45 already. I know, I know. You're probably singing to yourself a dude, so that's amazing. I know. But, hey, you know, maybe uh, maybe I was born to be uh, uh, another Federico Fellini. You know, he's a famous uh, Italian director, Mark. Oh, Nuzzo, yeah, very familiar. In fact, uh, uh, 1960, La Dolce Vita, one of my mom's favorite movies. Uh, what was the name of the movie? La Dolce Vita. Uh, again, Mark? La Dolce Vita. Okay, sounds like you're saying, hey, waiter, can I have some ceviche, which is an appetizer, okay? It's a pronounced Dolce Vita. Say it with me, Dolce Vita. Do Dolce Vita. Uh, much better, Mark. La Dolce Vita. Well, being Italian, you know, I'm... What?! You're not Italian. Oh, actually, yes, I am. I'm half Italian. No, you're not. Uh, yes, I am, no. Nuzzo. Yes, I am. You're not. Nuzzo, uh, I am. Uh, no, you're not. Uh, yes, I am, Nuzzo. Uh, Mark Smith. Uh, no, you're not. Uh, Nuzzo, uh, yes, I am. I don't believe you. It's true. You're not, and I can prove it, Mark. Really? How are you going to prove I'm not half Italian? It is very simple. You do not need to be O.J. Simpson's lawyer to prove this case. First, I'd like to present to the court evidence one, a recording of Mark saying La Dolce Vita. La Dolce Vita. You see what I mean? Okay, let me finish. Mark, what is your name? My full name is Mark Robert Smith. Aha! Let the court make sure it here. Mark Robert Smith. Mark... Robert Smith. And the jury must understand that Mark Smith is not an Italian name. 
It's an American name. How can it be an Italian name if it don't end in a vowel? It doesn't end in an A, an I, an O, or even a U. You know what I mean? Come on. Gavel, gavel, gavel sound under the judge's desk. Case of dismissed. You can't be serious. Oh, I am serious. And by the way, Mark, uh, you being a, you know, a content creator, uh, do you got maybe a special effect sound of a gavel hitting a judge's desk? Because it'd probably be, you know, pretty good to put it in a, at a, this a point of this uh, conversation because it'll give it a little bit of a oomph, you know, quality to it. You know what I mean, Spielberg? So that would not be a problem at all. At Absolute Vision Media Productions, we've got years of experience. Uh, sound effects is just, you know, in our repertoire of, of things we provide. So my full team would, would love to help you out with that. We have we have a full array of, of sound effects. And surely we can get you multiple of these gavel effects to, to get you your, your wow factor. Hmm, Mark. Hey, that it sounded like a, you were promoting yourself uh, on my show. And I don't mind, but I got to tell you this. If I don't get a, a three gavel sound, I'm going to edit that part out of what you just said, okay? Nuto, just email me at mark at absolutevisionproductions.com or at the website, find out any other information, absolutevisionproductions.com. 630-620-0000. Super easy to remember. Mark, uh, you know what would have been a good phone number for you? Listen to this. 8675309. 8675309. Jenny, Jenny, where are you? I'm at Absolute Vision Productions. 8675309. It's so easy to remember that number so uh, i got a question for you did you ever do what uh, you know when the show become a very popular like on a youtube uh, and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people they watch it uh, when uh, when something goes uh, virus uh you, you mean viral video yes that's what i said uh, no no that's not what you said uh, yes yes it is N- no Yes, it is, Mark. Uh, Nuto, you, you did not say viral video. Like I said, virus video. I don't understand why you're bringing this conversation up. We both agree. You said virus video, like the pandemic. No, I said virus like the social media smash sensation. Okay. Maybe you don't understand the social media lingo like I do. A- any which way, I'm sure you said the virus video, which is a whole different thing because it's viral. It's but- not different, but- Mark. We- the virus we- means like everybody catch it you know so everybody when they go on the social media they they got the virus so they mean everybody listening to the video the content the kitty cat they go meow meow and then there's somebody slap it on the head you know funny like on tiktok you know what i mean virus i I understand i understand it's just another way to say it yes virus did you ever do one of those videos well first of all you just can't you know, make it or intend to make a viral video. Um, viral video by nature has to be kind of organically just on its own take place. Now, in the last couple of years and with the advent of more and more social media media pushes, the fact is, is that there's groups and companies and even clients that reach out to us, hey, we want to make a, a viral video, which is kind of the wrong place to start. And in fact, um, you know, I, I don't really know of too many people or companies that kind of set out to do that. Now, there are certain best practices you can kind of do in terms of, you know, uh, how you want to uh, kind of produce it or not produce it or what, you know, who's the demographics for it or how you do it. Uh, but in a nutshell, you know, doing a viral video kind of just means you're doing something that's maybe uh, uh, intended for social media in, in, a, in a nutshell and you, you want it to become super popular. Mm. have you been podcasting oh my god mark it's a i don't know it's a hundreds of minutes now extremely impressed yes hey i am a quick learner like they say um but uh, mark i gotta get back into my show because uh, this show's already running over uh, okay so okay uh, microphone is checked uh, my water bottle uh, there is a refilled uh, and uh, i got uh, my throat lozenges here uh, ready to go. So um, my cousin Apollo tells me that uh, you interviewed, uh, I guess, a United States president. President uh, Jimmy Carter. Yes. 
Excellent. I, in fact, interviewed him several times. Oh, he, the the guy, uh, the guy that uh, brewed the beer. Oh no, that was his brother, Billy, from yes. Alabama. President Carter from Alabama. Um, Georgia, I believe. Oh, Georgia. Wait, what's the difference? Eh, never sure. mind. Uh, when are you? Is he the only president that you ever interviewed? Interviewed, actually, I believe so. Yes. Oh, so no other president call you after to interview them? Uh, no. So was it a bad interview? No, it was great that they're just uh, very, still very, very busy people. And uh, they don't do too many interviews unless you're like uh, going on stage and, and commissioning, you know, a quarter million dollar uh, retainer for it. But uh, OK, no. that, that sounds that sound nice, Mark, but uh, let me finish my question. And a simple no is a good answer. You know what I mean? So let's say, okay, so you did the interview with President Carter and mm -hmm. you said it went fantastic, but we got to see because no other place and it called you to interview them. Like, did Ronald Reagan call you? No, Ronald Reagan did not okay, call. Okay, okay, okay. What about uh, Bill Clinton? He looked like uh, he liked the camera very much and uh, he always uh, talked and that's if he's not with a woman, obviously. <laughs> It, no, Bill Clinton did not call us. George W. Bush? No. George W. Bush too? No. How about Obama? He's a big catch. Did you interview him? No. How about I, a vice president? Any vice president to call you? Like Al Gore? N no. Really? Because I heard he is a camera whore. Uh, he get on a mini jet plane to go talk to anybody that is going to listen. I was even going to invite uh, El Gore on uh, my show, but then I thought about it, and I'm all like, uh, what, uh, what has he got new to say? And uh, plus uh, that day, I had uh, the opportunity to get little Tommy from the neighborhood. Uh, what about Dan Quayle? Remember the guy, the potato guy? No. Oh. What about uh, uh, Mike Pence? No. Hmm. Uh, what about uh, uh, past Vice President Joe Biden and now current President Joe Biden? No. Do you expect maybe a phone call from Kamala Harris? It, it, it's, it's possible. Oh, why? Did she call you or leave you a message or send an email? No, it's just that. Oh, so now you're making stuff up, Mark. Okay. <laughs> okay. You sound like this one a podcaster, I know. But uh, let's uh, be serious uh, because, uh, you know, I like, uh, you know, the History Channel very much. I like uh, watching it, uh, especially all of the alien stuff, uh, you know, like uh, UFOs and the greys and the lizard people. Like, I always wanted to meet a lizard person. You know what I mean? I mean, like, uh, how, how how are they a lizard? Lizard, and then they're human. You know what I mean? It's like when they go home, you know, during the day, they're like uh, like the humans. They look like a humans. And when they go home, uh, is it like uh, when a guy from the office, he go home, uh, he take off his suit jacket, take off a tie, you know, throw it on the uh, hat rack. Um, what do these guys do? They take off the suit and then all of a sudden they shed the skin and they take the human skin and they like put it on a, a, a coat hanger or it'd be a human hanger and they put it in the closet and it sits there for, you know, till the morning and then they're just lounging around all naked in their lizard uh, scales, you know what I mean? And like uh, the like uh, the daddy, the daddy lizard sits at one end of the table and then there's the two little kid lizards and then there's the mama lizard and, uh, you know, I, I mean, uh, that's got to be how it goes, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure they don't got to be dressed up all the time uh, uh, in a human form because uh, that'd be crazy. Like, <laughs> I remember but one time uh, I went trick or treating with uh, my kids for uh, you know the whole night, and my wife I couldn't go. So, you know, they dress me up as a mime, and then obviously you cannot say nothing, and you gotta pretend like you're in certain situations, like, okay, right now I'm moving my hands like I'm in a box, and now I'm twirling a rope. Oh, before I forget, if you ever go dressed like a mime, which a lot of people do because it is the easiest thing to make a, a costume uh, when you don't think about it in a last minute, whatever you do, when you go trick-or-treating, if they ask you to the bob for the apple, don't do it because then everybody is going to give you a disgusting look after you got a big apple. Stuck in your mouth like a, this a, a pig from hell, and because of the bob water, your your makeup eh, is dripping down on your face like a eh, like a Alice Cooper after one hour in the cancer with all the sweat, all the the black mascara is coming down all over the white, and people are looking at you like, oh my God, who's that freak with the that look like a 
pickle with an apple in his mouth, and then they're so disgusted in you, and you're like, why did I go trick-or-treating? I should have stayed at home and watched the game or something. And then all of a sudden, they even look at the bucket, and they see the water is turning white and black with this, these beautiful, red, delicious apples. And all of the kids are like, I'm not bobbing for apple anymore, Mommy and Daddy. I'm not going to put my head in there. Not after the pig freak face guy did it. And uh, I got to tell you, I never liked to be a mom. I didn't like being dressed all in black and, uh, and I didn't like all of that makeup out of my face. You know what I mean? So when I got home, I took off all of my black clothes and I washed off of the white and the black uh, mama makeup and I, I became a myself. I think these lizard people are the same. You know what I mean? They come home, they take off the human skin flesh suit and they become who they are. Lizard people. So, okay, uh, where was I? Oh, yeah, the History Channel. So I watch uh, a lot of the History Channel myself because I like uh, history, especially the United States history because, uh, you know, uh, these guys that came up from England uh, and uh, they had to start fresh. And uh, I like to know about all the presidents. So what uh, can you tell me about uh, President Jimmy Carter? Oh, I'm sorry. We are out of time, Mark. We got uh, no time. We are running out. So, uh, thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lucio. I appreciate uh, being here. And uh, listen, everybody, check back next week. I'm sure we're going to have another wonderful guest. And I'm going to tell you the story that I promised I was going to tell you since I brought up the uh, the, the lizard people that uh, one time that I was abducted, or that one time I think that I was abducted, or the one time I think that I remember that I was abducted. So check back next week. I'm Nuzzo Castro Libro from, hey, what do you want to talk about? Ciao! Wow.